Welcome to Eternal Mena, the daily devotional broadcast of Grace Gospel Church. We are looking at Psalm 50, and we have looked at six charges that God brought against hypocritical worshippers. It's a very good checklist for you and for me from time to time to see whether we are hypocritical or authentic worshippers. Now, today we are looking at Psalm 50 and verse 20. And in verse 20, we read, you, verse 21. Today we are going to look at verse 21. When you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you. But I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. God had kept silent and uh, God didn't intervene. God had been incredibly patient with his people. We call it the forbearance of God. Now, God's people made a terrible mistake. They mistook God's silence for his indifference to evil. They thought that God was exactly like them and uh, that he was very happy with their animal sacrifices and their outward professions of faith and it didn't really matter as to uh, the sin issues going on in their life. Why? God was silent. They failed to see God as being holy, righteous and just that God will not wink at sin and God will not hesitate to punish sin. They interpreted God's silence as his approval. And uh, we too can think like that at times. We think we are getting away with sin because God is silent. God is not acting. God has not uh, uh, interfered, intervened. Isaiah 42 and verse 14, for a long time, I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back, but now, underscore the words, but now. Like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. Those are metaphorical words talking about God stepping into judgment. Isaiah 57, 11, we read, is it not because I have long been silent that you did not fear me? God's silence led to people not fearing him and not reverencing him. Isaiah 65, 6 reads thus, I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your fathers, says the Lord. So God is patient. He wants us to repent. He wants us to change. But when we don't, there comes a line that we step over and God is going to step into judgment big time. In Psalm 50 and verse 21, we again read those Two words, now, I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. I will arraign you. What does that mean? It means that the sins will be arranged and classified and that they may be seen very distinctly and clearly. God will lay before the people in exact order a full catalog of their misdeeds, which they must read and own. The sins they have committed will be paraded before them so that they would see and feel the enormity of their sin and come under conviction. Now today, praise God, the Holy Spirit is there to convict us of our sin. And so I'm reading John chapter 16 
and I'm reading verse eight. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. But we can choose to ignore the convicting voice of the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, we do so to our detriment. So when you and I come under conviction for sin and the Holy Spirit is very specific, very clear, with pinpoint accuracy, he will show us where we have gone wrong. We would do well to humble ourselves, to take responsibility for that sin and ask for God's mercy. Keep in mind that God sees, knows, and keeps a record of sin. God hates sin and he will punish sin. No one is going to escape sin and God's judgment. So it's a solemn word of warning to us in the 21st century. And may we all be wise in making sure that we keep short accounts with God and with fellow man. Amen. For more videos like this, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Grace Gospel English Church, Toronto. Thank you.